Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a lovely day. How's it going at Macrono? Atarashi Starlight, Orin Bloodstone, Phantom Genesis, Chocolate Zombie, how you doing? Toko, how you doing? Let's kick it over to Hitman's screen here. Here we go. There we go. Hey, did it. We did it. We figured it out. We dude it. We do the thing. We do that thing. I feel like this chat box is like maybe just a little much. Yeah, just gonna just gonna pop it up there, just in the corner. How y'all doing, Dreolith? How you doing? Oof. I am thirsty all the time lately. I think it might have to do with the fact that it's triple digits in Phoenix now. Oh my God, why? Why though? Just get into my webcam settings here too, while I'm messing with stuff. It's it's like a little far, far back. Let me just yeah, just, just get up close. Just get get all nice and up close and personal with 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 your peoples. How you doing, Velatala? How you doing, guys? We have an elusive target today. These two boys, in their very nice hats, they're elusive. Elusive. Son of a saying, I will trade you. M Michigan, are you kidding me? Michigan any day of the week. Right now, in June, Michigan, yes, please. I will take it. Welcome to Sapienza 47. All right. We have two targets for you. Two targets, both elusive. L. Trout, a veteran of the invasion of Grenada, and Richard J. McGee. Though at first glance these two might not seem connected, they have a long-standing collaboration, manipulating Trout's political opposition. Trout sends McGee after his weak but potentially dangerous adversaries, and lets McGee manipulate and ultimately break them. Okay. Trout and McGee are in Sapienza on an arcane meet-and-greet with European moneymen and power brokers, ahead of a possible presidential bid in 2024. We know that Trout is staying at the Via Caruso in the town square, right. but McGee's business is much more clandestine, and we don't have a location for where he will be. All we know is that he is to meet a Keith Keeble, a rich young man and possibly their next victim. Time to show them the consequences of political manipulation. Okay. Good luck, 47. Have to murder people in fedoras. Murder all the fedoras. Okay, so let's get our planning on. Let's see. Oh, wow, so I can start anywhere. Interesting. Hmm. Well, that being the case... That being the case, it seems like I should start in the mansion. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere except the morgue, just because I haven't, uh, I haven't unlocked the morgue. But that's okay. Yeah, let's let's start in the mansion. I always like to start with a lockpick. Let's see here. And we will hide. Let's go ahead and hide some lethal poison in the mansion garage. I think anything else... Well, yeah, let's let's also take out coins, because you can usually find something to throw as a distraction around easily enough. So let's take out coins and throw in the disposable scrambler. I think that's probably a, a decent loadout here to start with. All right, so, elusive target, the rules. Must begin the contract before the countdown expires. Yeah, I got six days left on it. If you die, you may not retry the contract. Once you have completed the contract and successfully exited, you may not retry the contract. Once you have begun to complete objectives, you may no longer restart the contract. Cannot save. May contain additional fail conditions. All right. Also, I've got a one-hour time limit, because that's when the E3... PC deedly starts, but 
We should be okay there, I should think. Good afternoon, 47. Trout and McGee have arrived in Sapienza. All right. We know Trout is at the Via Caruso, but you'll have to find out where McGee will be making contact with Mr. Keeble. Security is unusually high, especially with Caruso in residence. Do be careful, 47. Okay, so, all right. Oh, boy, that guy, that guy right there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, it starts being a hell of a spot here. All right, well, let's... See if I can just... Yep, don't mind me, don't mind me, don't mind me, don't mind me. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, actually, so this, this works out great. So we can just do that. And then look at this. Now that's all taken care of. Now... Just dump him... Here. Right. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Good start. Good start. Okay. I don't need. I don't need that pistol. Uh, screwdriver could come in handy. Absolutely. Okay. Now I just because this is the problem. This is the problem with the security man's uniform. Is most of the other security mans will recognize you. Let's see here. Okay, but they're all leaving. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. All right, yeah, in fact, let's, yeah, let's just go around here. Okay, so yeah, that's... Okay, that guy would recognize me, but that's okay. Just head down this way. Alright, how's it going, hey, housekeeping folks? So what I'd like to do... Well, I'd like to just scout out the premises and see if I can find Buddy Boy, but... I'm generally trying to make my way down toward the garage area. You the guy Carlos keeps talking about? Oh, okay. Got a white dot there. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. There's a white dot right there. Okay, no problems here. Good. good, good. Let's see. You guys are fine. Ugh, there's that white dot right there need to get... Oh, here we go. Uh, at Macrono, I have picked out another car. I have not gotten it yet, but I have been inside it and driven it and know that it exists. They're just uh, getting the... Because it's a certified pre-owned. They already got the mechanical inspection done, but they haven't yet gotten the... Um... Here we go. Grab them pills. But they haven't yet gotten the, the what you call it, the detailing done. Oh, is that a crowbar? Those can be useful. Okay. Uh, nothing over here. Eh, yeah, it's just gardener boys. Oh, oh ho. Oh, hello, Mr. Trout. How are you today? Oh, oh, hi, though. Oh, hi, though. I mean, do I... Do I dare? Can I just shoot him and book it? <laughs> oh, man. Wait a minute. Stop choking oh. that person right now! No! Pacify nope. the shit! Someone help me! Oh, well, that, that went bad. Gotta run, gotta run now. Gotta run, gotta run now. I fucked up. Gotta run, gotta run now. Ah, yes, I fucked up. Gotta go find a better disguise because I fucked it up. I fucked this whole mission up. Okay, um. 
Okay, um, hold on. Okay, there's, there's one dude down there who's just, yeah, you, yes, you just come on down here. Oh, wait. Here we go. I am housekeeper. Oh, my God! Almost a year. Go hit some mans. Woohoo! Turn swift. Thank you. Yep, hitting all the mans. Reveal yourself. We're calling the area. Oh, crazy. Crazy stuff. Well, uh, don't mind me. Just keeping houses. Just keeping houses. Yeah, I thought maybe I could just pick off his bodyguards from behind one by one. Did not work out. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so now... Can I... Mm, yeah, that's not looking good. Well, hold on. This guy's just out for a smoke break. I bet you anything the other guy is in this building. This is where all the mob shit goes down. Try and get in through the basement here, and then I'm guessing I won't be allowed in there in this disguise. But maybe I can work something out once I'm in. The oh, there's here's a guy. Okay, just making sure nobody's around who's gonna give me problems. Hey, buddy. Now I'm you. I'm just going to be grabbing that key. Okay, yeah, because, yeah, this is like the town hall building. Uh, I should probably hide your body. Come here. There we go. Isn't there usually some... Okay, guess not. I thought there was usually some emetic poison down here. Oh, well. How's it go? Hey, oh. Man. Keep smiling and keep cooking. Okay, I see security boys. Security boys probably mean somebody in here worth securing. Okay, that guy's just a chef. Yep, these folks are all normal. Okay. Head up this way. Thing fun in here? Am I allowed in here? No, I am not. Oh, but there he is. There he is. Whoop. Do 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 do. Gonna locate the exit. Do 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 do. Gonna punch you in the face. Yep, watch your fire. Watch all the firings. Oh, there's usually an exit there, but there's not right now. Oh dear. That's right. You guys just run away, run away, run away. Don't worry. You guys go that way. I'm just gonna go over here and try to find a better disguise. That guy. Oh man. Okay. Um. This guy's from right here. If I can just. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yep. You just go away. Just go away. Okay. Oh no. I've already got this disc. Oh, that's what I'm already. Oh crud. Okay. Well. I can. Pr I can probably make it down to the boat. Probably make it down to the boat. This is fine. This is fine. It's all fine. Oh, look at that. Free key card. Oh, oh, disguise? Yes! Oh, mansion security is compromised too, though, so that doesn't really help me too much. Also, I'm still trespassing. Oh, well. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm a humble churchman. I'm a humble church staffy staffer.
Yep. D surely Jeebus will save me. Yes. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Loving it. Bonk. Okay, bye. Woo! Hitman! <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Two stars, boom. <laughs> Look at that! I got an uh, I got an Italian suit with gloves. That doesn't look suspicious at all. That short sleeved ass shirt with black gloves. Uh, sorry, sorry to hear about your shop there, uh, Gabriel Kane. Okay, well, geez, that um, that went quick. Let's see if I've got any more uh, escalations to do. I think I saw one in Sapienza. Yeah, the Gladwin simu simulu simulacrum. I don't know how to say that word. Simulacrum. I've, that's a word that I've seen in print thousands of times, probably. And I don't, I don't think I've ever tried to say it out loud before. It never occurred to me that I don't know how to pronounce it. Hold on. Simulacrum. 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 Okay, cool. Well, now we know. Now we know, and knowing is important. Alright. So, we've got to murder this dude, and I would have no idea where to even start looking for him. So, that being the case, we'll stick to the normal spawn... Um, yeah, just, yeah, just, just stick to all this stuff. Don Flamingo rides again! Okay, alright, so he is in the mansion... He's in the garden. Okay. Huh. So yeah, let's just let's just get in with the flowers. That'll that'll work as well as anything. Well, but then I'd have to leave my then I'd have to leave my gun behind. Oh well, fuck it. I'm here. I can always restart. Flowers. Here you go, bud. You can you can take a nice nap in the tall, tall grass. Take a nice nap in the tall, tall grass. And uh, you can have my gun to keep you company. How's it going, friendos? 
Just a humble delivery man. Anything that could be seen as a potential danger. No? All right. Thank you. Okie dokie. So, yeah, no special conditions yet. I just need to get back there. Time is of the essence for you guys. Chop, chop, son. Flowers for Mr. Caruso. Ah, excellent. You can leave them on, Mrs. Ah, thank you so much. I will go and do that. DiGiorno, my friends. Okay, so he's just right here. What if I were... Oh, right, no gun. Uh, let's see. Hey, buddy. Who wants a coin? What? That's right. Go get the coin. Get the coin, boy. Go get the coin. And snap! Oh, look at that. Well, uh... Oh, I can't, like... I can't just, like, throw the flowers. I can't just put them any old place. Ha! Not suggesting that Senor Caruso... I'm sorry. Were these... I forgot. These are not the flowers for, for Mrs. Caruso. Uh, these are the flowers for... Someone else. I'm just gonna be leaving now. So sorry. So sorry. Pardon me, friends. So sorry. So sorry. Silvio Caruso. All right. Number one. Now I've never tried. I've never tried spawning as a gardener. That might be the place to spawn for this particular escalation. Hey, Silent Assassin. Hashtag best. How's it going, Zendo Cornell? Okay. Okay, so now there's two, two boys that I have to murder. Let's try starting... Let's become his gardener means I'll have my gun in there, which is nice. Let me just see... Just stash some... Yeah, let's say... Eh, yeah, lethal pills. Lethal... Well... Hmm. Should I do lethal pills there, or should I do... I'll throw the disposable scrambler in there, just in case. Actually, no, no. I'll do. I'll do lethal pills in there. And then. I'll take the scrambler with me. Not likely that I'll need the scrambler, because you're right. They leave key cards lying around all over the place, but. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Okay. Okay, so yeah, if I become his gardener, then I'm just right here. Woo, okay, but, but, woo, boy, okay. Caruso is right the fuck there at the start. Now, I, I'm fairly sure there's a way of murdering boys with the lawnmower. But I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, I can create an oil leak, that's what it is. Alright, well, this worked out fine before. Oh, but crud, I forgot. Oh, jeez, that was dumb. I forgot my coins. Well, let's see. Let's let's observe this boy's patterns. And see if there's... Also, where's the other boy? Okay, he's just over there. Should be easy enough. Oh, okay, he just goes down there. Okay, dope. Can I just shove him over the edge? Yep. 
Okay, well that's easy enough. That's easy enough. And then there's this guy who's... Okay. Yeah, no, just... To... Are you gonna come over here? Oh, no, he's gonna go inside. Nuts. I... Well... Do, 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 do. And then I snap your neck. All right. There was a dead rat. Simple enough. There we go. All right, didn't quite get Silent Assassin. Had a body found that time. That's okay. Okay, so now I've got to murder, murder Johnny Golfsman, too. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. I've murdered him. Well, not murdered him, but taken his place on this map a million times. Alright, so... Yeah, I don't need... Yeah, let's swap this back out for coins, because, yeah. I'm... And... Let's see. You know what? Let's let's just try this cuz I think I think I know what to do here. So, okay. So, I start right here. Just going to let these boys pass by. go then head back here I'm gonna get seen by this camera that's okay I'm not worried I'm not worried about cameras right now there is the exclu the explosive golf ball I don't know that that kills the golf pro or if it just kills Caruso though I'm right, just gonna grab this. Oh, sorry, no gardeners allowed. Didn't realize. So sorry. Alright, let's just head over here. Head back. Over here. Perfect, perfect. Just gonna put this right in here. For their golf lesson to be done, I'm just going to head this way. Perfect. Huh. Okay, is there anywhere to hide this body around? If I were to take it in... Perfect. Nope, nope, nope. Come with me. Come with me. I did not give you permission. There we go. You live in there now. Okay. And the last guy's over there. Jeff? Welcome to Jurassic Park. 
fly guy. Welcome to the land of the blind. Thank you, my dude. I should boost the, uh... I'm just gonna get into my stream labs here. I'm just gonna boost the volume on that particular... That per particular deedly real quick, because... I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to cut it off there, but thank you, Fly Guy, for the prime sub. Francesca. Subbing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm not the one who calls. Widget. I did say that. But... Yeah, I just gotta wait for him. He's gonna okay. drink out of that in a second, and then so, I can go follow him. Get my message. Okay. Alert box. We'll meet up in here. Subscription. I'll call you as soon as Caruso lets me. Is. He's unusually patient today. No, please. There we go. Chuck Bell. <laughs> Still got it. Of course you do. You, yeah, that's right. You deserve a little drink. You just enjoy yourself. Already done, Marvel hero. Knock that out oh, in like 12 minutes. Uh, uh, definitely below par. Uh, uh, what is the metal taste, I wonder? Oh, God, that is, that is awful. Oh, that's, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't feel good in the old tum-tum. You should, uh... Yeah, you should you should go do something about that. No gardeners, sorry. Very strict security measures today. Yep, get it all out. Get it all out there, buddy. Let me just hold your hair for you. Get it all out. And go in there. There we go. DiGiorno, my friends. There was a dead rat on the Oh, good. Did you my friends? I must go. There are other gardens that need tending. I don't flamingo! <laughs> Gabriel Kane, who does number two work? That's a deep cut. It's a deep cut, my friend. That was level three, I think. Yeah, not quite Silent Assassin. Okay. Okay, all right. Now it's gonna get a little rough. Have to get them all within 30 seconds of each other. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, let's try. In that case, yeah, let's try starting from the ICA safe house, then we can get the golf ball. Let's see if that works, because if I can do that, if I can start with that, then I should be able to, to hit everybody else pretty quick. I mean, the other option would be, would be to yeah, well, let's try it this way first. Let's try it this way first. I'm trying to think if there's any other stuff that I need for it, but not really. Not really. It's true, the explosion might throw everybody else on off their patterns. Well, let's try it. Let's try it. It sounds like dumb fun. Start here, grab the golf ball. Head up here, 
unlock this. Become as kitchen man. I don't think having that key really does anything for me, but I always grab it just because it's right there. Head up this way. Oh man, he's freaking right there. Nah, nah, nah. So tempted. I'm so tempted. But yeah, not as my first kill. Uh, but they're yeah, they're already golfing by the time I get here. I don't know if um. Can I? Seriously, this guy. What is his problem? Yeah, yeah, and then they get suspicious. Hey, you stop. No! No! Go play golf! Go play golf! Go play more golf! I'm just kitchen help. I gave you golf ball! Use golf ball! Did he forget all about me? Nice! Nice! Yes! Perfect! Trying to think, where is this guy in his cycle? Because they're just about to die. This, yeah, he's about to go back this way. Yeah, this is not going to be timed well. Okay, so yep, now that 30 seconds starts. Oh, yep. Yep, they saw me. Yeah, that didn't go well. That didn't go well. Hey, friendo. Okay, where's where's the other guy? Where's that last guy? He's way over there. Okay. Yeah, 12 seconds? Yeah, I can totally do this. What the heck? Where did he... Oh, jeez, he went around that way. Oh, no! Nope. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. All right. So. So here's the thing. If I start, if I start by poisoning, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to Switch this back to being Gardener Man. I'm going to start with the Emetic Pills. I'll start by poisoning... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh, giant enemy grunt, why not lethal pills? Because lethal pills... I'll show you. Just let these guys go past. They're all suspicious. Head this way. Because lethal pills take effect immediately as soon as he drinks it. But if I use the make him sick pills, then I can follow him, knock him out and then wait to kill him until I'm ready. Yeah, here we go.
Trucy True asks, how long do people stay in the toilets while poisoned? Um, I don't know, but I'm gonna go, um... But I'm just gonna follow him, knock him out, and leave him in the bathroom. And then I can hit him, jump out, actually no, get the gardener, run in, get him, and then run, kill the last guy, and then just book it. I think that's gonna be gonna be the way to do it. The thing is, I don't know where the guardsman, I don't Well, yeah, I mean I suppose I could. That's true, that's true. I could just go get him, because because I found that bathroom. So yeah, I could I could try and go get him. If I can catch him in that, that same point in his cycle. Oh no, I forgot the lockpick. Nuts. Can I get through this door? Is this one locked? Oh, it is. Okay. Just gotta wait for him to unlock it. Well, that didn't work. Nope, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Uh, you just, just keep your backs turned, please. Oh, right. This is the same bathroom. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. So, just disguise myself as you. Why does it say engaging? No, it's fine. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good guy. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Okay, so I just leave him in there. Oh wait, no, that is a different bathroom. That is a different bathroom. It just looks the same. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Did you see something? Better lock and load. Yep, you you better do that. Uh, you go lock and load. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't move. You're pretty good. I'll give you that. Ah, Jesus, he's still coming after me. You jerk. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing nothing. You jerk. Oh no! Oh no! He saw me. Uh, you can put, you can put normal knocked out people in the hiding spot, uh, but not targets. For whatever reason, because you can't kill them once they're already in the hiding spot. Oh, jeez. Mistakes were made. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Snap. You, you jerk. You jerk. You're supposed to be. Ah. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I feel like, I feel like I've got this in theory. I've got this in theory. Yeah, I don't think I need to. I don't think I need to really change anything. I just need to. Look at me blending in, blending in all non-suspicious like. Woo! Put this in here. Try and get Silent Assassin if I can.
Ah, well, never mind. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is the same bathroom. It's just from the other entrance. Crazy. So am I trespassing as a gardener right here? Yes, I am. Okay, good to know. Wait. Alright, yeah, these guys are all fine. Yep, just wait for you. Yeah, I don't want the silent assassin that bad. It's one of those, if I don't have to go out of my way to get it, hey, why not? But, oh, also, grab that gun just in case. Okay, and there's nobody. Yeah, those guys are all facing away from me, so that should be fine. Oh, that's right. They're... Because I can see them through walls. I'm constantly thinking that... That they're going to be able to see me, but they're not. Okay, just let them go past. Yeah, the, that bathroom does have a window. I'm just going to have to be careful to... Well, maybe if I put him, like, here? Maybe the golf guy won't see him when he, when he comes through all sick-like? Might be okay. here for you. There's those white dot boys. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. They're just heading that way. Wow. I don't believe it. That's right. Okay, good. Yeah, he does not see the guy. Not that it probably would have mattered, but you never know. Drag you right over here. Just so he's not visible through the door. Okay. Those guys are still over there. That's okay. Just doing my gardening thing. Just just doing it, just doing it up. Go ahead. Oh, come on. Walk past me. He's right there. I want to go murder him. I want to go murder him. There we go. Alright, got you. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Now we head this way. Snap you, snap you. Let's, you know what, just for a little variety, let's exit this way this time. I 
think I can get to there from here. Yeah. So I also don't know if gardeners are allowed in the castle. Well, that guy seems to be fine. Oh, but I don't have my lockpick. Can perfect. Let's see. Okay. Hello, Thanks, friend. Sir. Head down here. Down here. Uh, I have not shot down the plane with the cannon. That is a challenge that I want to try sometime. And... And we speed boat out. Hey! Okay, so that was that was escalation number four. Deadly landmines have been added. Find and equip the disarm device to bypass the mines. Okay. So I didn't wind up using coins at all. There were a couple of times when a lockpick would have been nice. So let's try that. We've got ten minutes before before the thing starts. Not sure if we'll quite be able to make it. We shall see. Just see the map here, so... So it shows me all, but it doesn't show me where the disarm device is. That's unfortunate. Whoop. <laughs> all right. I'm going to uh, kick it over to the standby screen real quick. I am going to uh, take a little nature break. Going to take a little nature break. Going to... Uh, Gonna switch it over, we'll watch the E3 presentation, and then we'll come back to this and, uh, and try and knock out this last level of escalation. I'll be back in about five.
celebration of the most vibrant gaming platform. For the next two hours, you'll see all new gameplay footage, trailers, and interviews. Taking the stage today. Oh, there's microphone. First okay, made it back just in time. Sorry about that. The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, Borderlands 3. All the right. Of Evil Genius 2, Starmancer. PC Last gaming Oasis. bingo cards. Get them ready. Games from coffee stands. Also, yeah, studios. two hours. Who? Bloodlands. <laughs> Planet Zoo. Let's see what's next on what's the schedule. Next for Terraria. Remnant from the ashes. Mosaic. Okay, Warframe. yeah, I guess the next thing isn't uh, Ubisoft. It isn't three. until one Ubisoft, Shenmue but e. the reveal of Unexplored Two, Alijo, Age of Wonders, Planetfall, and more. And now your PC gaming show hosts, Day Nine and Frankie Ward. Hey! Good morning. Good Hello! morning. Yes! Okay, there's one that says Ladies and, and gentlemen, welcome to the nice PC show. Gaming Show! Yeah! Yes! We're so happy you're here today. We have a great show for you lined up. We got 30 games that we're going to be showing off. 30! Some of them will be updates to existing franchises and titles. Others will be exclusive world first looks. Y'all ready? Well, I first want to thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. Without their support, this event would not happen each year. So thank you so much. Thanks to you for coming out. It's 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Happy Monday, everyone. Best day of the week. Hello to all of you up in the balcony. And of course, bingo card thanks here. to you tuning in live from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome. We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. Now, for you guys at home, for the first time, whatever platform you're watching on, we are going to be pulling your clever comments. Just, just remember that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. And one of the things we're especially looking for are your questions for the Borderlands 3 team, because, Sean, you've got a mission to put their questions to the developers later. That's right. Midway through this show, I'm going to be asking okay, those Half -Life questions to the creative director of I'm Borderlands not, so 3, the, hashtag PC Gaming The show site that I found this particular... Until then, bingo card let's on. start the I PC Gaming my, Show with our very first title from UK developer I considered my, my last resort Several option because some of their the stuff like Half-Life 3 never Evil fucking ever Jesus. that should just a be the middle three Evil square let's get real and now Rebellion is ready to reveal its nefarious vision for the project so PC gaming show who's ready to stroke a cat menacingly here is the world exclusive reveal for Evil Genius 2 world domination Yeah, this, this bingo card's not great, but it was the only one I could find. If I'd been thinking of it far enough ahead of time, I would have just made one myself. Oh, well. Then again, I don't consider myself enough of an expert on the gaming industry to make a fun bingo card. Quite DreamWorks brings you not quite the Incredibles.
the Masquerade Bloodline series, the successor to one of the most beloved RPGs ever. And with me to talk about it, I have Brian Mitsoda and Kara Ellison from Hard Suit Labs. Now, Brian, That's, you were a That feels like a hell of a pivot. Game, so what does it mean for you right. to finally get to work on the sequel? Um, it means that uh, a lot of people have uh, very high expectations and we have to meet those. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's take a look at whether you are going to meet them because we are going to take a look at the world's first gameplay footage. Like, okay, there's Evil Genius 2. We're going to not talk about it at all and just ignore the fact that it ever happened and just pivot into vampire. <sighs> Guess I have to be the one to tell you. You're dead. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule. You don't break the masquerade. <laughs> Paradox Interactive, isn't that the, the Creator sea. Kings people? We're all fighting over yes, scraps here. Yes, that is totally the Crusader Kings people. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet? Huh. That's... That seems like a weird choice, but okay. Uh, yeah, I guess if they're just publishing, then, then sure, whatevs. Guys, what does it mean to be a vampire in this world? Uh, so in uh, the Empire, uh, what, what it is, it's, it's kind of a darker <laughs> version of our world, and the vampires kind of uh, need to keep their presence secret. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it's... So the vampires are I guess it's a little of, like saying, you know, uh, Bethesda, that's the, the Elder Scrolls while, people. Well, yes, but they also publish a bunch of stuff. Us, uh, in order to get blood. We're talking about feeding on human beings. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's show. Yeah, I know but a lot of people like the first case, uh, though, Vampire uh, the Masquerade blood Bloodlines game. I never, I never messed people. with it, though. That's right. I hear we good things. The, uh, resonance system, which means that essentially vampires uh, can kind of like, like uh, see. Also, the yeah, I saw zero the gameplay there. Uh, like there might have been some that were. Desire, and then they, like, can, uh, they can feed on those. Some of those shots. Like, feel the same things as human beings do to feel more Some alive. of those shots uh, look like they might have like been in-engine, but there's a difference and between really in-engine and gameplay. In as well. what kind of also, yeah, I think I watched some of the, the Merrick plays like years well, and years very, ago. very uh, fragile, very volatile relationships, very mature rela relationships, so it's going to be a fun time. <laughs> and one thing that was really intriguing to me when I was learning about this game is you don't just get bitten and turn into Nosferatu, Dracula, or Brad Pitt. And to be honest, I think you should maybe put Brad Pitt into the game because then I'm definitely playing. You actually <laughs> this is the only look. Look, interview with the vampire is the only vampire That's anything right. I've so seen uh, because in the game, yes, uh, when you were made can't, as a vampire, can't come up with a newer sorry, reference uh, for a vampires. Vampire, a lot can't of think other of a simple vampires single vampire time, anything newer um, than in interview with. Place. Uh, and that therefore, means that, Brad um, Pitt. Essentially, uh, they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty uh, on their own, and you know you might have a family, you might have, say, uh, a wife and children, and you are morally objecting to drinking blood. How's it going, uh, last green survive. And so you might have a less good time, let's say, than the player is having. So you can find them throughout the world as well. And Brian, the first game came out in 2004. You've mm -hmm. been waiting 15 years for this. Any pressure? Uh, yeah, tons of pressure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to make it work. Well, you know what? I think there are people around the world watching this, and of course, the audience here, and they all can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? <laughs> so I think you've convinced everyone here See, now. That when I would consider a crowd goes mild. Uh, we're going. Uh, Q1 uh, next year. I'm with you, Umbra Nova Gaming. I never read the book, but yeah, the, the movie was, I don't Thank know. Thank you so much, Brian and Kara. Good luck. I also luck. didn't see up, the movie until guys. like decades later, so maybe it was just. Now, have you ever wanted to play Dwarf Fortress? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty small stage, so Some yeah. Samantha is a space station sim from Omenux Games and Chucklefish. After a catastrophe on Earth, humanity has launched a desperate attempt to find refuge among the stars. 
Your task is to manage a colony capable of sustaining life, crafting components, controlling colonists, and sending out crews to mine asteroids. But when you're living in space, there can be big consequences for even the smallest mistakes. Let's take a look at the brand new gameplay for Starmancer. Oh, Chuckovish is the uh, is the Stardew Valley people. That's cool. Is this gonna be Stardew Valley in space? Because I could get into that. I don't know. Maybe the Stardew Valley publisher. Ah. Is this a 4X? Are we 4Xing? Okay, I, I never I never played any Dwarf Fortress, so I have only the very loosest idea of what that means. Chucklefish developed Starbound. I never played that one either. next guests both started as modders and now they each independently run their own studio let's welcome to the stage from tripwire john gibson and from torn banner steve piggott hey sean now i understand both of you started as modders working independently and running your own studio what talk me about the collaboration that you started together Yes, yeah, Steve, so uh, we've known the Torn Banner guys for a long time, uh, even giving them some advice when they were modders going commercial, helping them not make the mistakes that we made. <laughs> and uh, we've been friends, and we've always wanted to work together. And now we've sort of formed this independent, former mod team, professional super group to <laughs> get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, that, yeah and for us, this is a dream That had a neat, well. um, uh, we've always been really a neat graphical to style. And like, we really respect their games. I'm into that um, stuff. We see them as one of the few studios that's bringing true innovation to the FPS genre. What they showed what didn't really give well. me a good well, sense a of what the actual like moment-to-moment -moment gameplay loop is like. And, and granted, that's hard to do with that sort of PC game. Talk to me about Chivalry 2, Steve. <laughs> well, Chivalry 2 is, is about bringing players into their favorite medieval movie battle scenes. Oh, and our, our flagship game oh, mode, Team shit. Objective, does that by having players complete medieval objectives like sieging castles, raiding villages, and, uh, and Hello, yeah, you're, really, you're not just Hello, going and standing in an area and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses, killing peasants, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Burninating the countryside. Peasants, getting killed. Burninating really the peasants. It's really about letting the player experience every Thatched iconic moment cottages. of the era. And on top of that, we've, we've, this time around, we've increased the player count scale to about two and a half times what the previous game yeah. was, 64 players. Yeah. And on top of that increased scale, we've added Ooh. horses, which 
really allows us to add a lot of drama to the game oh, and bring experiences like dog. the oh, Battle of the Bastards from, from Game of Thrones. Don't worry, we'll ignore the last season. Just Battle of the Bastards is going to be in the game. Yes. All right, so I want to ask about the swordplay element to Chivalry 2. I mean, I know it's a really critical element. Yeah, and this time around, we've completely revamped. I mean, we really view our, what we're doing here as bringing a true sequel in every sense. Yeah. We've attempted to completely revamp the combat, movement, and animation systems. Mm -hmm. So that every swing, every every action of the combat feels readable and fair, and also has the satisfaction of the, and the weight that you would expect when two medieval knights in full armor are clashing. Yeah, and it's uh, it's very very fluid and much more accessible than the previous game. And it's you know the the, the pace is so much quicker. It was what I really enjoy when when I'm playing. It. Yeah, and I wanted to ask about the fluidity because in a lot of melee combat games, you hit a button and there's like a full animation swing and then you sort of reset. Yeah, I was hoping and that might be discrete chunky times. I understand well, that. Well, because the the, the square says different. nothing about mountain yeah, blade. Yeah, we kind of think of it like when you're swimming, where you're kind of constantly using both arms at the same time. And so yeah. if that had been uh, mountain uh, blade, we would not be able to. Part of our focus is and making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at the same time. Like one on three, one on four situation. Exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the the becoming the ultimate warrior fantasy right. and uh, achieving glory on the battlefield. Well, I mean, I do have to ask, you're talking about sword play and mastery, but the original chivalry, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance the mastery with the fun element? Yeah, our goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk. Uh, and we love that. Um, <laughs> at, at, at least half. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important that, effort They to say try. that and is. The game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over They the say that is the like the, the sign of good, of I mean, good the game is uh, UI. Hilarious. Is when As people example, can navigate you can it drunk. Beat a man with a chicken while quoting Shakespeare. Also, wait. Like so, like <laughs> picking up my... a chicken is a yeah, physically that's a mechanic. Him to death with well, that's yeah. my display well, capture I mean, is messed up. When can people get cutting off the bottom of the screen? Chivalry that's weird. Chivalry Two is coming out uh, early 2020, and it's coming huh. uh, first to the Epic Game Store. Oh, look forward oh. to checking it out in early 2020. Gentlemen, John Gibson and Steve Piggott with Chivalry 2. Thank you so much. Hold on. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming there we go. Show. Let's take a I look at I what's fixed coming it. up next. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Coming up. Build a world for wildlife in Planet Zoo. From the creators of Darksiders, Remnant from the Ashes, Baldur's Gate 3 and more trailers, interviews, Does and gameplay footage. Does anybody give shit one about Darksiders? Are, are these blops cod flavors? Or, um, are they cod blops? I mean, you're right, That Crazy Crabs, Darksiders 3 did came out last year, did come out last year, and they had to literally pay me to play it. <laughs> There's a very bad one-shot of it on TFS Gaming. And yeah, that was a sponsored one-shot. I mean... We had some... We had some fun, but the fun was in spite of the game. The fun involved going that out to the parking lot with some cameras Mosaic, and some dumb props. An atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from developer Killbite and publisher Raw Fury. So how are you guys enjoying it so far? There's been some swords, some space stations, vampire puberty. We're listening to your reactions to the PC gaming show throughout the entire broadcast, no matter what platform you're watching and ranting on. Man, she's trying so hard. Our next game is a ghost-themed multiplayer hide-and-seek game inspired by she's a She's a goddamn mod. professional. Charge up your proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. You, you know what? She's got a job to do. She's up on that stage. She's got a smile on her face. Come on. When the night falls There's only you and me When the night falls, you can count on 
Also, she's clearly reading from a script, but she's faking it well. Darling, if you only knew. Like she is just, just seamlessly, like just boom, boom, boom. She is rattling off. So just she is just nailing what this teleprompter is giving her. I got a big surprise for you. Deus Volt Magi. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the Prime sub. Appreciate it, my dude. Okay, so you're a, you're a ghostman. You're a poltergeist. And you have to murder the Ghostbusters. I got a big surprise. You know what? I am fine with all of this. I am fine with all of this. Murder, be as poltergeist, murder the Ghostbusters. Like, who the hell knows if if the game itself will be fun, but... But I like the concept. I can dig on that. Joining me on the stage to talk about Midnight Ghost Hunt is the dynamic one-man team. Creative director, programmer, designer, it's Sam Malone! Thank you for having me. <laughs> Sam, please tell us what is going on in that. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt all about? So, Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting hide-and-seek game. Uh, you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters, like a 4v4 format. I see. Uh, the ghosts can hide inside average everyday objects around the haunted house. Uh, the goal is to look like harmless furniture, uh, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and if I'm understanding correctly, it's not about hiding as a lamp to try to assault and take out a hunter. It's actually, you would do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly, so the main objective of the ghosts is to try to stay hidden as long as they can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Midnight being kind of the uh, hour oh, of the yeah. ghosts, basically. Um, they can fight back if they like, but in general, uh, you know, they want to try to hide. Master Blaster guy, kind of not to worry, himself, you have missed nothing. You can just hit him in the back of the head and knock him no out No worries, quick, you and he has less missed to nothing. Well, what, what's the identity of the hunters? I mean, we've been seeing furniture flying all over the place. What are the hunters doing? So the hunters, it kind of can be di uh, divided into two different segments. Uh, the first part of the game is kind of almost like a detective game because they're sort of trying right. to figure out where the ghosts are hiding because it's not really uh, you know, obvious at first glance. So they've got gadgets like a footprint tracker. They've got like a radar like you saw to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding, basically. Uh, as soon as the first ghost is found, yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. Uh, people, there's ragdolls flying everywhere, and they have that cannon. Yeah, that's true. That's really true. It was Vampire the Masquerade bloodlines, too. So those are kind of the two aspects of the ghost. The blood and well, uh, Talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for Midnight Ghost Hunt. I understand it's based on a Gary's Mod mod called Prop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration, but the big twist for us is that the props fight back. You saw the furniture, they hurl themselves yeah. at you, they knock you out, they send you flying. So it kind of almost becomes like this action hide and seek sort of mashup. Uh, you have a reason to be a little bit afraid of uh, the, the things that you're hunting. So that changes yeah. up the dynamic a good amount, I think. And I want to ask about when the clock strikes midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on there? So midnight, if even uh, one ghost survives four minutes into the match, then uh, you hear this ominous grandfather clock chime across the map. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary. And How's it going, Captain Cheesebag? Glad you could join us here. Turn as vengeful spirits. Uh, they're a lot more powerful than before, and they glow a very brilliant red. So at this point, uh, the tables have turned. The hunters are now the hunted, and they just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive long enough for their evac to come, which is another four minutes or so. Usually wow. the ghosts Demystic, win. I might actually have, have Vampire the Masquerade the time, in my like Steam library. Yeah, you know, because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. Right. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try Let's to find prevent out. midnight from even occurring by destroying all right, the right. ghosts and clearing the house, basically. Well, awesome. When can people get the chance to try out Midnight Ghost Hunt? So we'll be running an alpha event yep, later totally in the summer. Yep, totally do. Uh, totally do. Midnightghosthunt.com. <laughs> I'd also like to give a shout out to our Discord, uh, discord.gg slash midnightghosthunt. Uh, later in the summer, we'll be giving out keys on our Discord. I don't know well if I got it gifted to me or if I picked Wonderful. it up in a Steam Ladies sale eight Malone. years ago or what. <laughs> Sky Games. For our next title, we got Frankie up in the balcony. And if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. You do understand correctly, Sean, yes. It's a big sequel to a small indie game. 
Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight, to be clever, and to solve its mysteries. Explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend its people. Search for magic lakes and ancient statues until you die. And die again. This is Unexplored 2. Yeah, it's, um, it's rough trying to play an older game for the first time when it requires mods to make it a good experience because if you've played it back in the day before it got all old and busted, you have some idea of what it's supposed to be like. Playing it for the first time with mods, it's like, okay, is this busted just because it's an old and busted game? Or is it busted because I didn't get the mod installed right? Uh... <laughs> so, I can't say we've definitively gotten a... I can't say we've definitively got anything, anything crossed. I mean, we can cross off Baldur's Gate 3, because all that has to do is show up, and they've said it's coming later, and they showed a little clip from it, so we, we'll cross off Baldur's Gate 3 here. That's one square. I can't say I've seen any blatantly obvious shilling of Epic Games Store yet. One of the biggest bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is investing in a new monitor. And here to talk about a groundbreaking new display is Samsung's Dean Dalsero. Welcome, Dean. What you got for us? Today we're here to announce a new Samsung C27 RG5 curved gaming monitor. Well, let's take a look. Here's the thing, D-Mystic. Here's the thing, D-Mystic. It's blatantly obvious shilling of Epic Games Store, not just Epic Games. Let's see, let's see if his mic is still low when he comes back on. Dean, we've seen the video, and I gotta start asking. Talk to me about some of those juicy features and specs. So it's a 240 hertz curved gaming panel. We believe it's a world first, so you have lag-free and tear-free performance. Um, okay. And we think that the, the curve, yeah. it's 1500 art radius. It's yeah, gonna be a very yeah, immersive he's, experience you wouldn't get from a He's still a little low, low, but I, I mean, I you can hear him, you can understand him, it's fine. the color specs. Sure, it's a 3,000 to 1 contrast ratio, so you get those deeper blacks, brighter whites, right. hopefully you'll see your... Okay, so yeah, you're right. It does have powered by scenes. Epic Game and Store I, I right in the logo. I saw that flash Damn up on the screen as well. It's the first G-Sync compatible monitor, so we're super excited about that. Well, since this is the PC gaming show, and we're showing off a huge variety of games here, what are the types of games that you would expect that... I mean that hertz refresh rate and the G-Sync to work well with. Sure. So we think everybody's going to appreciate the, the speed and the performance, but ultimately, esports first-person shooters are really going to benefit. Right. Well, of I don't know. Have to ask, yeah. Not just when I don't, is it available, I, yeah, I don't think that's quite obvious enough. So it'll be available like, that's pretty standard branding shit. For a 27 inch panel. So it expands our gaming lineup to oh. eight miles. Yeah. Because yeah, when you said 400, I mean, that's the 27 inch is right. the $400. I'm like, wow. Yeah, so our gaming lineup will be expanded to eight models, ranging from 24 all the way up to a 49 inch dual QHD. Uh, check out samsung.com slash gaming240 or see us in the back of the room for more info. Yeah, that's right. For any of you in the audience, it's there. You can go there for it. It's, it's 4K. not 4K. It's not 4K. Not for that price point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to let you know that we have all sorts of great presentations and games coming up. Let's look at what's coming up in the PC Gaming Show.
Stay tuned for more announcements, trailers, and never before seen footage. Okay, including you, you don't need to coming up me. You can just show the thing. About Borderlands 3, the next game from Clay Entertainment. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole in Valfaris and more. Yeah, we. There's and no law that says that you have to have a two presents. hour show. What's next? You can Fun cut Con. out all of this interstitial shit and just go 90 minutes. That's that's fine. That's allowed. Did nobody tell them that that's allowed? Hello, everyone. Thanks for the warm applause. Um, it's very exciting for all of us at Funcom to be here at the PC gaming show for the very first time ever. And naturally, we would like to show some of the cool stuff that we've been working on. So without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Something strange is going on all across the zone. I don't fear nothing until now. A lot's happened since you've been traveling, Khan. We could use your skills. Stalkers got each other's backs, right? What happens to you happens to me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling that moose. Okay, so we've got Conan flavored tower defense. Like, alright, tower defense is fine. But also, it's 2019, y'all. I don't know. Like, the only thing that makes me think tower defense is it kept on saying wave, wave, wave. I associate massive incoming waves with tower defense as opposed to RTS. Oh, who would have thought? My son, off to fly among the stars. Oh, did I say fly? I meant die. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, founder and director of Mighty Kingdom, Philip Mays. So yeah, at Funcom, we've been doing our own games for over 26 years now. But recently, we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers and help them publish their games. And on that note, I'd like to introduce Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, um, a studio out of Australia. Has giant been enemy ground. That, that said, um, a it did say PS4, but I think it said Xbox One as well. So I don't know so that that quite counts. So on April 1st this year, we put out a little trailer for something called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the date, it was perhaps no surprise that people decided that that was uh, April Fool's joke. So uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. Yeah, it looks like they mostly did mobile apps before this. This isn't a million, to be honest, this isn't a million miles off from looking like a decent Zelda. Looks kind of fun. Okay, all right, they're doing it on purpose. Okay, they're doing it on purpose. All right, that's allowed.
So there you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real, and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year, 2019. We also have a playable version here at E3 at our demo room, so if you want to give Stick Figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> at Zero gets it. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival game set in a post-apocalyptic -post future where the Earth has stopped rotating. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open world environments. Good time. But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original looking multiplayers we've seen, with interesting ideas underneath. A player-driven economy and some incredibly, incredible death machines. Coming to early access on Steam on July 15th, let's take a trip to The Last Oasis. My tribe built wooden legs to lift us over the burning sands. We must move forward. I can't say that I've seen ridiculous indie dev project that will never work out yet. Like, I've seen a lot of stuff that I'm not super interested in, but nothing I'd point to to go like, no, you're an idiot for even making that. Also, these steampunk spider things. I don't I don't even fucking know, but but I'm okay with it. Black flag on land. <laughs> land of thieves, I like that. Yeah, that's the thing. The actual gameplay looked like a thousand other generic third-person fight-each-other-in-multiplayer games. Were those... Was that a squad of penguins a second ago? Did anybody else see that? Okay. Thing. The aesthetic of that that last one the name of the game is was Age not great. Wonders, the only Planet thing Fall, interesting about it were those sailing game. land Joining crab whatever. To talk about it is the game director Leonard Sass and principal gameplay developer Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Hi. Good to be here. Good to be here. So, Leonard, just give us the gist of what Age of Wonders Planet Fall is all about. Sure. Age of Wonders is a turn-based strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. And they include uh, So the there's Vanguard a square here that says Dev starts talking to the crowd instead of talking to host. Um, I feel like we've had the opposite problem the where, like, who it's okay to, to turn around and address the crowd a little. <laughs> you know, I want to ask, because there's a pretty broad range of 4X strategy games, to give a sense of what the gameplay is, I just want to start from the beginning of a game. What happens when you first land on a planet? Well, um, each race has their own spaceship. The spaceship comes down onto the planet. The planet is where the entire game takes place. Mm -hmm. And that spaceship will then transform into your capital colony, where your entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors, and each of these sectors... Oh, I'm sorry, story. Strab. I, I, I said crowd. So I meant that small group lab, up front there. Horrible mutant creatures, <laughs> an entertainment complex overrun by horrible robot monsters, a temple with holes in the sky and horrible demons who come and get you. Uh, <laughs> and I did see in the trailer dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah, yeah. with lasers. Perfect. Well, cats I mean, with lasers. No, sorry. No cats with lasers. I'm so sorry to disappoint all of you. No <laughs> cats with lasers. You have to settle with dinosaurs. 
You know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resources in tech is a huge part oh. of strategy games. How does that function? Right, so part of these tech trees come from your origin race. They sort of represent the past of where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers, orbital laser cannons that you can launch from space, uh, social doctrines, it's not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part of your tech tree... Here's the thing, this is not poor English, it's just an accent. Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include doomsday technologies that well, allow you to my phone infect the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites or win the game by uh, splitting space-time. I love how many details you're giving me of the horrors that await <laughs> on the planet. Uh, the future is not a pretty place. <laughs> Well, I want to ask about some of the combat that we saw, because in a lot of strategy games, the combat can be very brief. It just you know, shows two armies pinging off each other. But I understand that the tactical layer is quite rich. Right, so when combat starts, you'll see like on the world map, maybe like a little sort of space lab or something like that. When you go into combat, you will zoom all the way oh, in, and you will oh, be inside okay. the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. All of your units, which you've been putting together and built, are now deployed. In turn-based combat, you can move them into cover, use their abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space tools oh, and little metal suits that dig holes in the ground, like <laughs> shoot from the Dargo decided the to peace out. Maybe you've chosen the Kirko, sort of horrible alien yeah. bug monsters. They run forwards and slash people and puke acid on them, that kind of thing. I mean, how, how long do some of these battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe uh, two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons blasting ah, holes in the world, yeah. and that can maybe take 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about when we can play the game. Okay. The game is due uh, this August 6th. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, consoles, uh, and it's available for pre-order now. Well, lovely. All hey, right. what's that URL? Uh, it's aow-planetfall.com. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. It's less than two months away. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why, the year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins torn apart by the satanic Plan Z. A brave band of heroes cast the Fuhrer into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Achtung, this is the world exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers. Sniper Elite 4. You know, she's game. I'll give her that. Rated M for Mature. Elf Lord, don't be silly. Valve doesn't make games anymore. Why does that zombie have flamethrower? So it's like they're, they're zombies, but some of the zombies are special zombies, and you can play as the special zombies, and... And if you shoot the weak point, the zombies go explode. <laughs> Now you can set traps for zombies. You can take the flamethrower from the zombie and kill more zombies with the flamethrower that you took from zombie. Would you like more ways to shoot zombie? We have minigun for shoot at zombie. No, no, <laughs> silly zombie, you get exploded by zappy laser wire. 
<laughs> Don't touch that fence, zombie. After the fence has killed some zombies, it will stop killing zombies, and then zombies will get through fence. So you shoot zombies with gun. <laughs> Giant Hitler zombie in sky. Th there are... There have apparently been three of these before, and I've just slept on it. Later on the PC Gaming Show. A love letter to classic JRPGs. What's next for Warframe? A surreal noir adventure set before, during, and after the Big Bang. Baldur's Gate 3 and more. Ravaged the earth. An unending assault without reason. We are victims to a hatred that we do not understand. You don't like regular zombies? We have tree this zombies. Evil will consume our world and the These zombies are made of trees. Unless you rise. Glory and blood. Who seek the source of death itself? Prepare yourselves. They are here. You may shoot a tree zombie with gun. I don't know who this character is that I've created now. <laughs> Watch out for that zombie. He's got large hammer. <laughs> Joining me on the stage to talk about Remnant from the Ashes in that trailer, we got the chance to see so much new gameplay footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David Adams. <laughs> David Adams creates zombie for you to shoot. So David, I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So Remnant's a co-op action shooter set on an apocalyptic earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And I mean, in that trailer, we got the chance to see so, a yeah, huge variety a of different So yeah, a few of these devs like, have had their mics seem really low at this point. This story? So as a player, you're on sort of an Odyssey-like quest to save the world. And, uh, okay, it seems like they really tweaked them up a little bit. different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. and. You start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it 10 times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the coolest features of the game is the dynamic generation system. So we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You, you built those all by hand, right? Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'll be like, I met a guy in a helicopter, an old guy in a helicopter, and killed a tree ant. And we'd have completely different experiences and, playing the same game. And you just have to keep going through and eventually it, Yes, randomization in games are. is a thing, in yeah, fact. you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world to mm. experience the content in their world, and that's a big part of the game, just jumping in. I'd like to you introduce get. you well, to I, Diablo. I about loot, which is a big part of the game. How does it function a Ah, finally, a game with loot. gameplay experience. <laughs> yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the uh, dynamic generation. So if you fight a boss or meet an NPC or get a cool, unique side quest, it generally coincides with a cool, unique item. It might be a boss weapon. Oh, I see. You might be able to go to a Hellgate so in London. if you play the game and you get all completely different events, you'll have different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these. And you mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game is full co-op from beginning to end. You can jump in at any point. And so the game wait, is definitely slower paced. It's a fire-breathing dragon game, so made of awesome. tree. There's a huge advantage to bring your friends. That sounds like a real bad idea. Or fight off different events, or just generally progress through the world. Yeah, well, I mean, as a big fan of Bloodborne and Dark Souls, I'm really looking forward to Remnant from the Ashes. What? What's the release date, and where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th on oh, awesome. PC and 
Xbox and PS4, and if you pre-order the game now, you can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Well, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, David Adams from Gunfire Games. You're right, Pazuzu. I didn't see anybody hit Remnant. anybody else with a fish in that entire And as we mentioned earlier, trailer. keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, just use hashtag PC Gaming Show. And until that time, let's talk about our next title. This one was announced two years ago at the PC Gaming Show here. It's a game from Clay Entertainment called Griftlands. It's changed quite a bit in the last two years. It's now a deck building I, I keep rogue wanting where to you like games fight, by Clay, and I keep bouncing off of them real hard. World. It's gonna be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month on July 11th in Alpha. Let's take a look at some of the footage of what you'll be playing. Excuse me? Huh. So it's CCG meets Aeon Flux? Huh. Planet Zoo is the latest game from the makers of the brilliant Planet Coaster. Please welcome Here's Jackson and Lisa Bowens from Frontier Development. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Now, I'm not here. feeling it. What kind of zoo are we going to be What I am feeling, here? though, is so hungry, is and it is almost time for me to eat again. I'm going to go uh, grab a couple of snacks. I'll be right back. Building and looking after a modern zoo, and you get to look after the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the world you build around them. And today, for the very first time, we're really excited to show everyone here a gameplay video and to announce our launch date. Well, fantastic. Let's buy the world's largest family pass and take a look inside. animal shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing, yes. adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But before we saw the trailer, Piers mentioned this is a modern zoo, but what exactly does that mean? So nowadays when you go to the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. You go there, you want to be, you know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated. And these are all things that you're going to be able to do in Planet Zoo. And these ideas of the modern zoo is really what we take to heart, and we're going to be promoting you know, the health and the welfare of your animals as the most important thing to do. 
And Piers, when can we see more gameplay and when are we going to be able to get our hands on it ourselves? So we're um, obviously demoing the game all, um, all this week at E3, but most people aren't going to be able to see that. So we've recorded our presentation. Lisa's done a fantastic mm -hmm. voiceover for it. And we'll be releasing that onto Frontier's YouTube channel. That goes live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. Thank you so much for joining us. Piers and Lisa, everyone. Next up, we have a very special guest all the way from Japan. I'm back. Did I miss anything? He said facetiously. Please welcome to the stage, gaming industry legend and Shenmue creator, Yu Suzuki. That is right. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage is a legend of Japanese game development. It's Mr. Yu Suzuki. Hello, everyone. In addition to being the brains behind the following games, Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, Yusan also created the Shenmue series. And he's here to talk about Shenmue 3 right now. Take it away, Yusan. Uh, I am so honored to be here standing on the stage today. Okay, that counts as production crew makes a mistake. Checking that off. I just want to say thank you to the all the fans supporting me for the long 20 years. Thank you very much. The wait. The wait is nearly over. That's right. Let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. Honestly, I don't think your Kung Fu is strong enough. Uh, Grandmaster, I... A long time ago, martial Hot take. arts were Shenmue bad, was bad even back in the day. But humans are interesting creatures. They practiced in secret, away from prying eyes, and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. What did you say to me? Stop it. They threaten and extort money from shop owners. Get I feel like the character models and the lip sync and the voice acting are that way on purpose because it just it wouldn't be Shenmue without them. I feel like they could they be doing ours. better if they tried, but they wanted to still feel like Shenmue. Hey, wait right there. <clears throat> this is him, the Japanese guy who got in our way. You've got some guts to barge in here on your own. I know so many people have been waiting for Shenmue 3. I would like to once again thank you so much. Thank you, Yusan, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You, everyone. Thank you. Now our next title is near and dear to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. I hear good things about sleepy dogs. The essence within you, which is who we are. In dead or in living, it's near and it's far. In human and armor and beasts of the land, it flows through the forest and breathes the sand. Lightning and 
throw out their essence you hold in your hand. Unleashed on them all during these final hours, we'll raise and rebuild to take back what was ours. The name of the game is Songs of Conquest, and here to join me in talking about it is the lead designer from Lava Potion, Carl Toftfeld. Hey, yeah. Carl. Ah, hey, thanks. I mean, let's just start off for anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series. What is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start out with in the town that you just saw in the end of right. the trailer, and uh, from there you recruit your wielders, it's what we call our commanders, and uh, yeah. you recruit you know. an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources to flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town. I'm inclined to call that clay that game a do. ridiculous Adventure indie dev project that will mind. never work yeah, out. And, you know, I know that part of the core. I don't know. How, how are people feeling? To get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man. Talk to me about those. Although, is clay battles. even an indie yeah, dev so, anymore? So the battle, just like the whole game, is turn based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like four nuance and face Wikipedia is still, right. the Griffins first so line on. is Clay yeah, is an things. independent yeah, well, game know, development as, as studio. Who so loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into Songs of Conquest, yeah. but what are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. um, in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within them, sort of like the soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to bring the troops with the right essence with your wielders. Oh, skills. I see. So if you want to uh, like make your troops go faster, you need to bring a troop that has that essence, like cavalry. And maybe to ask a basic question, what if my opponent kills that cavalry? Then you can't do the magic. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you're fighting someone, you kind of have to like weigh the pros and cons of what to kill off. Like, do you want to destroy their magic or their powerful troops? Where can people go to get more information? And as always, when's it coming out? In late 2020. Oh, it's quite a ways off. It's quite a ways off, but you can go to songsofconquest.com and sign up for Alpha, and then oh, you can play earlier. Well, as you know. I'm really looking forward to playing it, Carl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, our next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store for Vermintide 2. I don't know that. Would you use the word popular to describe Vermintide? Seems like it, it came out and it did its thing and people had their fun with it and then that was kind of it. I'm assuming this is an expansion or something, because yeah, it, it came out. Yeah. TFS played some of it. I wasn't involved in that playthrough, but... of the new PvP mode coming to Vermintide 2, which turns the Warhammer Fantasy cooperative game into Yeah, the bits that I saw, the gameplay footage that I saw made me, made me nauseous in a way that first-person games sure haven't done since the 90s. It's so much more satisfying when you know you're going ham on a but fellow player, making him... the guys might have had the, um, the FOV settings screen. weird on their computers, or maybe it was a frame rate thing, I don't know. ...at vermintide2.com forward slash version. Versus. In Per Aspera, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet, starting from a single drone in your landing site and turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Talon Industries and publisher Raw Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Aspera. As we all know, reaching the red planet was not humanity's greatest achievement. 
transferring the complexity of the human mind to machines was so they can succeed where we fail so they can build us a home on that distant dusty rock today amy reaches mars and begins their mission amy are you with us of course, I'm with you, Houston. Okay. In the Assassin's Creed universe, our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. But for his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, he's going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. Here to tell us all about ancestors is creative director and co-founder Patrice Desilet. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you for having me. Really happy to be here. It's I've been waiting 10 years yes. to come back on the big stage at E3 showing off a game. Well, it's fantastic to have you back. I just want to ask, what inspired you to tell the story of human evolution? Well, when I started Panache, I needed a game. Wow, uh, so they're not... An open world game in which you can do a lot of things. You need a character in a 3D environment. So they're not going to show us anything? They're just going to launch into the... the oh, okay, guy, here we go. A historical dude, so I need an historical period. They say, oh, let's go back at the very beginning. It'll be easier to do. Because I won't have to build a city, I won't have to build technology. I mean, and they're still not showing us what the game is. Like, yeah, okay, those are some CGI Africa monkeys. Africa 10 million years ago. That's but, and that's not easy to build. It doesn't sound easy. I mean, how have you turned those Ooh. themes into gameplay? Well, y you play our last common ancestor, right, of all the big apes, and then you have to explore your, your environment, and eventually you expand your territory, you expand your clan, because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass characters. And eventually you evolve into different species, up until Lucy the Australopithecus, roughly two million years ago. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's going to be a lot more dangers in this world, so tell me a bit more about those. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, and, and basically, at the end, it's pretty much you. We are the predator, and everybody's afraid of you. And that's, that's the idea of Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. So, Patrice, ultimately, what is the key to evolving your clan successfully? Curiosity. You need to explore. Because, you know, I made a game about characters, and you needed to follow the story I wrote for you. This so time, the thing is, you're basically writing the story. EVO, right? there's, there's at its no heart, and I wanted to like that game so bad. It's not about at its heart, it was just kind of a bad givers. platformer. It's not about looking at the mini-maps and the little dots. It's about you, hey, Homo sapiens. So what Can is the actual like gameplay of this game did? all about? Like, what is, what do you do? It'll be, for you to answer that question, August 27th, well, I was going to on PC you, first. I was going to ask you when we can see it, and you answer my question first. Thank you yeah, so much, Patrice. Good at this. As Patrice says, Ancestors will be released August 27th, and you can learn wow, more. Wow, so that's coming in, like, two months, but they didn't show anything of what the actual gameplay is. That's, that sounds sketch. More montage. Untitled Goose Game? Like, here's the thing. They said this was going to be about two hours. We're at, like, an hour ten.
Okay, that certainly was some Adventure Time looking thing. Oh. Finally we get and one more thing. But it's not, it's not on the bingo sheet. It's been on every bingo sheet. Squeeze me. What? Please welcome to the stage, Loring. That was Whitney, actually more interesting CEO before you Brandon said the word Master. chess. Indeed, auto chess has turned out to be a sensation, with hundreds of thousands, millions of players getting a taste of it. And that here to does talk not about warrant a one more thing. Coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Loring Lee. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm the CEO and the founder of Dragon's Game. Dragon's Game is a game developer and a publisher comes from China. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game, Auto Chess, to all of you. This is really an exciting moment for us. As the trailer says, this is a real engaging game of Auto Chess. Dragon's now is working with the creator of Auto Chess, Jodo Studio. Mm, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and check off the painful interview with chat. Dev, who speaks poor English. Like, I'm having trouble PC following this. Mobile. So that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now, we are building the PC version with, uh, by using the uh, game engine of Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows, Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. With the, help, with the help of Apple Games and uh, by the power of uh, Unreal, I believe we can finish our job quickly and efficiently. And uh, today, I'm very glad to announce the PC version of Auto Chess will be coming to the Epic Games Store. I look forward. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call that blatantly obvious shilling of Epic Games Store, too. Auto Chess on PC. Later this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, Auto Chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above, I understand, is an inspired indie game. We'll find out, Sean, because one of the things we love about PC gaming is the way that game creators from all over the world can draw inspiration from one another's work. Chris Towers is a great example of that. A gorgeous indie love letter. <laughs> you can see him like walking him off the street. <laughs> Chris Towers' spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Towers. Yeah, they seem to assume I should know what the hell auto chess is. Oh, Reslane, have you been able to see that? I guess I just haven't noticed until now. If you saw what was, what is, and what would be. If you knew how it ends. Would you change it? Could you make the hard decisions? And would you be strong enough to fight? Become a pretty lady. Get knocked up. If you learn from the past and act in the present, you can rewrite the future. Can you stop your own kids from being born? <laughs> it's good, Master Hirano. PC gaming. It's not the size of your weapon, it's how you use it. And I'm holding one of the, well, well quite frankly, it's, it's a bit average, isn't it? It's just your average, you know, Glock, really. No, 
It's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. A brutal, heavy metal-infused 2G action platformer inspired by true old-school classics like Concha and Torrican. Assuming the role of fearless warrior players must blast and slash okay, their way just... the doomed citadel of Valfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. My admiration for this woman is only increasing. From publisher Big Sugar, this is Valfaris. As she puts just all of her energy into whatever ridiculous bullshit they're having her do. a real Dead Cells vibe. Incredible action in the Valforest trailer. I'm very excited yeah, for our Contra next guest. Dead in Cells. case you yeah. have not been in downtown LA, E3 Could be good, is huh? covered with Looks Borderlands right. 3 art. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> of Borderlands 3. Beautiful's a new one, thanks. Yeah, there you go, Paul, right. welcome. I mean, there's been so much hype around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited to be sharing this year at E3? Oh man, so, you know, we've talked about our Vault Hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's, and she is our uh, Gunner Vault Hunter, so yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different planets, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, I want to start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a railgun or a flamethrower. You know, if you want to barbecue your enemy, something like that. We have many different you guns know, for uh, you to shoot at zombies. Yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be Do you like a whole bunch skill of trees? Questions. She has skill tree for to kill zombie with. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I want to make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot, because you've mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past we've had Would you grenades, like to blow up zombie? Like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know? Yeah. This time we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through, right? So we have like a ton of different <laughs> grenades that, that are in there. Uh-oh. Uh oh Shield where if you duck, oh, that there shield we go. will extend out in front of you, you know, so oh, just, just tons of different things that we have you know, with our characters. Class mods, class mods are unique, and that they give you skills this time as well as enhancing the skills you currently have. I, I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts. What are those? So artifacts are, you know, we So we artifacting on, like, is what's hey, happening on the, the screen in front of you I right now. Slide into things? Can I jump? Can I man? Yep, right, like right, that. Right. So when we were playing with that, we, had, we slid into a barrel, right, and the barrel exploded, and we're like, well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So why don't we do something like that? So our artifacts actually add certain things to movement. So for instance, you can slide faster, <laughs> you can slide, and every time you slide, there's an explosion. We have something we call, we call. <laughs> A second category of questions unrelated to loot. category of questions unrelated okay. to loot. Well, All right. Just, gonna just be checking the chat, campaign. just making sure What's that's not just on my end. Campaign? Yep. What are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game. Okay, that's definitely about. production crew right, makes a mistake. Content. I mean, okay, well, it's E3, so I that could give a little bit. be so a Twitch have, problem. Right, call the Guardian system. So for those people who play and not a them problem, but I doubt it. When Twitch has problems, it doesn't usually you know, look like it's that. It's basically kind of an infinite progression system that added to your stats. Yeah. We doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian rank. And Guardian rank not only has that infinite progression, but it has skills and different skins that you can open up as you go through. And the cool thing about that is like every character that you play on on that account yeah. gets the benefits of Guardian rank. Oh, interesting. All right, last category we're gonna go through and then we're gonna hit some rapid fire questions. 
How do the boss fights in Borderlands 3 compare to Borderlands 1 and 2? I know those were big aspects. What, how do you build upon that? Right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I, I'm an old school Nintendo fan, right? So I love huge boss fights that have like three oh, yeah. phases and stuff like that. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault, right? And so there are right, different right. like huge boss encounters there. Uh, that are just you know multi-phase boss encounters. We have like a lot of different mini bosses throughout the game, so a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. Well, now I want to ask some really quick questions that should be yes <coughs> or no, very brief. First, from Castoray, how will you be handling multiplayer? Um, multiplayer, we will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time. So, awesome. From it. MHL Animations, can I pet the gun? Great question. I'm not here to judge what you do with your gun, so you know you. <laughs> that's a personal question. All right, great. Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions. That's what I will say about that. Oh, you tease. Yeah, sorry. All right, from Ironic Sanguine says, is Tiny Tina going to be seen fighting alongside the Vault Hunters? Yes. Nice. All right, I'm just gonna blast through a couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. Will we get to see Flack? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? D d nobody yes. actually asked that. Mm, yes, hey, how's the microtransactions? <laughs> can, you, can you transact and my micro? maybe. And Perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely, right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands dot com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. Sean, thank you. And once again, if you have not seen all the setups in downtown for Borderlands 3, oh, they're beautiful. Our next game, we're going to be revisiting a guest that we saw earlier in the show. He's upstairs with Frankie. What you got for us? Oh. Oh, hi, we're, we're live. Sorry. Hello. I was just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? Give this woman I, I a damn really raise. Sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire, thank you for joining us again on the show. Yeah, very Very to be busy here. man. Yes. yes. She will now, wear, year, she will hold whatever you put in front of her. She will wear whatever you put in front of her. Give this damn woman a raise. About. Absolutely. Maneater is an open she gives world zero action shits. RPG, or shark PG as we call it. You start as a, a small baby shark pup, and you have to survive in this harsh world and try to eat your way to the top of the ecosystem. The three words that we think sum the game up the best are eat, explore, and evolve. And uh, we also have someone we'd like you to meet. Well, let's meet him then. Let's take a look at the new trailer. You are no Don Flamingo, Joe. Okay, I'm seeing flamingos, I'm seeing fish. hit each other with a fish though. You come any closer with that camera, we two gonna toss it. In the trailer, you had, quite frankly, you had the chance to get out of the shark that suit. Was Scaly Pete, and Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Sk Pete is uh, is a I best fisherman in the Gulf, tail. best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So he's not a very nice guy. And now the story of Maneater is told uh, through the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters vs. Maneaters. And it follows Pete and uh, the player shark 
on <laughs> its adventures. It's the it's and, the shark uh, like from the know, halftime it's, it's and the Super really, Bowl that you know, one time. It's, it's a very and it was it was way, a fun time. Uh, we all saw the shark and he I was dancing and and he danced and we liked it. It's like your main goal of the shark is to just bite everything. Yeah, there is there is an awful lot of man eating going on in this do game. Do sharks have scales? I don't think they do. And, do they? Uh, but we'd like to think of the game as a shark tastic fun action game. It's like GTA if you were a shark. Um, but there's shark tastic. <laughs> there, there is more fun to the game than just eating. Action. So uh, we spent a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and uh, and adding abilities to uh, go up on the beach for an afternoon fun snack. Fun action. Um, so uh, there's. There's a, a lot of exciting things that you can do in the game. And you mentioned before it's a shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to, to the shark PG elements of the game. Uh, there's growth, there's life phases, and there's evolutions. So growth, shark skin uh, is made up of tiny teeth-like structures people, called placoid scales, kind of also like known as dermal the denticles. That allows you to level up. These your scales shark point toward the tail and, and help to reduce and friction from surrounding phases, water uh, when the shark life swims. Phases, You'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So let's say you're a, a brooding teenage shark and you're about to become an adult. When you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in uh, power and capability. You, and then as you reach these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be You are actually making me body. less For interested example, in becoming as shark. That allow you to shred boats or a powerful tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Just really quickly, John, everyone's wanting to know this question. When's it coming out? Oh, so we're really hard hammerheading away at this game uh, and trying to make it the most awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we do not Look at that game, woman's but face. We're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Oh, well, I hope we do, John, otherwise. Can somebody I'm gonna clip? I'm going to have to start biting people. In fact, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I think actually I'm going to find an audience member because you guys look tasty. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yo, dog! I heard you like chairs. We are we are literally selling chairs now at this E3. The armrests move. Please tell me that this is a chair PG that I can play as chair. Nail gun. You know, one of the absolute Thank best you, Everett, parts Lithrop. about being sponsored by iWin for the PC gaming show is that I get to sit for this next segment and talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. And part of the reason why it's maintained such popularity is the fact that the developers Relogic continue to add content, going from 250 items at release to now over 4,000. Let's take a look at their penultimate expansion coming up, Terraria Journey's End. Okay, so that's Terraria update deets. Yeah, dumb reject. We'll we'll go back to some Hitman 2 after this is done. We've got like a half an hour of this, then we're going to do some more Hitman 2. Riley, thank you for the Prime sub. Appreciate it. Oh, no! Hey, you the know what? Title that we're going to be looking Props at on those tech boys for being the on the ball. Like, oh shit, it's broken. It's I don't know. Transition out of it. Click, 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 click. Annapurna Interactive and joining me to talk about it is game director Sam Barlow and actor producer Logan Marshall Green. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. I'm in, man. Now, I'm if, in, man. if you haven't played her story, you totally should. It's fantastic. I want to note it is a game where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what happened with a murder. What, 
what is it that's going on in telling lies? What's the premise? Man, so, I am really uh, not like feeling this. Lies is a game in which you watch video footage, talking about the thing together. first and then showing and footage. Like, no, show the footage first. Give me some context for what you're about to talk about. Which contains secretly recorded, intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and see telling lies in action. Let's take a look. Once upon a time. It's late. I gotta get her in the bath. Excuse me. I don't love you and I don't miss you. FMV game? You already know too much. It's late. I gotta get her in the bath. Love you. Love you. What is love? I Baby, don't hurt me. I've only ever been in love once. I was with a girl I met when I was 18, but I was too young and naive to handle it properly. I guess I still carry a torch for it, which makes me an incurable romantic or underdeveloped emotionally. I'm just an idiot. I'm a loyal friend. A man died in my house at work today. Oh, Sam, I got some questions for you about what we've just seen. Let See, me talk to me about. I don't actually. I don't want to know any more about that. I just want to play it and find out what this dumb thing is. You got a thing. So what we do in Telling Lies is Question we mark. take all of the exploration <laughs> you would have. Epam, thanks for finding that butter sword. Thank, thank you kindly. And we apply that directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up on the subtext, listening to names. No, I love places. dumb FMV games. With the worse, the better. use that to find more clips, dig into those, see. and over time kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's... It's truly like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with the open world video games, they talk about, you know, the square kilometer edge or miles in America. Um, what's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like, how many hours of footage is there? So we got like over 10 hours of footage here. Wow, so it, really? It's a story that encompasses like two years. What I wanted to do with this one was, like I said, really embrace this idea of it being an open world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in this story. Yeah. All the characters. It's oh this my huge, God! Halfway to the baby now. Well, I'm curious, Logan, hey, as a, as a thanks, Retro Gunner. Kind of game. What is it like to actually try to have all the layers in there for each performance? Also, not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing. Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open-world game. But our approach and Sam's approach was. Um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it A to B. And so, for the most part, that's how we shot it, obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV show. Yeah. Um, and in this case, a game, you're gonna be shooting out of, out of order, but we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we were actors, we just went after intention, yeah, yeah. And, and what do we want? And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep um, you know, it's got a lot Man, of scope. Man, the little scope. Twitter yeah. crawl um, at the bottom there is just like, shut up, Terraria! More Terraria, though! Directors I've worked with, so it was uh, very similar. Nice, guys. nice. Yeah, look, yep. look at you. We, yep. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of you, if you have not played her story, it's quick to play through, it's absolutely brilliant. Please check it out in the meantime, but we're, of course, waiting to find out when can we play Telling Lies. Very soon. Very soon, I promise. We'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam, you can wishlist it on Steam. We all love Steam. Um, and yeah, very soon. We'll be showing a little bit more of during E3, and uh, the game will be out, yeah, very soon. Fantastic. Desperate to get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Once again, telling lies.
A little crawl just skipped. Now up on the balcony, Frankie's gonna be talking to us about a game that my friends year after year after year keep telling me I have to play because of how much they've improved it. Frankie, what's going on with Warframe? Well, one of my favorite parts of last year's show, aside from being upstaged by a giant duck, was getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. Okay, so VG, that fake, to the universe, fake gamer it's person. Mom, Rebecca Ford. So, chat, behave yourselves, please, because Mother's here. Now, Rebecca, what are we about to see? Uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of our players have been waiting a year for a look at what we've been calling Railjack, so it's about time to, you know, see what we've been doing. Yeah, let's take a look. Is Warframe on our bingo sheet? I feel like this bingo sheet is not doing a good idea, a good job of predicting anything that's going on here. Yeah, geez, we've only crossed off five squares so far. We don't have more than a two in a row. I don't think we're getting a bingo. I don't feel like we're getting a bingo. It must be so exciting to know that the fans have finally seen it and you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players yeah. are going to be able to experience. I wasn't shaking before we started talking and now I am because it's real because, you know, Empyrean is what we're calling Codename Railjack. It's basically taking the space ninja part of Warframe, sending that it back up to was space, two bringing words. players that squad gameplay they know, taking the enemies like the Corpus and the Grenier, giving them their own Railjack to you know, essentially explore the solar system with and take down the bad guys. And when are fans going to get to see more? Well, uh, TennoCon is in London, Ontario. It's July 6th, and you can come uh, watch it online on Twitch. We're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh, what Empyrean is going to be. Well, today I'm getting a feel for the suit. So uh, what's the deal with that sweet-looking necklace prime? How do I get my Tenno arms into it? I cannot say that on live television, but, uh, you know, there, there are ways. But, yeah, you just have to watch, link your Warframe account to your Twitch account. If you watch 30 minutes of our Tenno live show, you can get it. But hopefully you stay for the whole hour because we got lots to show. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. And good luck with TennoCon on July 6th. Thank you. Okay, now we've seen some amazing stuff today, but nothing quite so gloriously strange as our next game. Developed by Brooklyn-based studio Feral Cat Den, it's an existential space jazz odyssey set during the Big Bang. Yeah, it's actually uh, blown my mind learning about this one. Buckle up, everyone, because we're about to get bonkers with Genesis Noir. Okay, so Doctor Who shoots gun at sun, making detective man. What? Is this an art? <laughs> she's pregnant. Is there a game in there anywhere? Or... Genesis Noir, just beautiful stylish art. The next game we're going to take a look at is the twist on the stealth genre. It's called El Hijo, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery That's and Spanish find your mother, for mother the using Ijo. toys and tricks to avoid monks. Let's take a look at this gorgeous spaghetti western inspired project from Studio Handy Games.
holds up butterfly. Is this gameplay? <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, like, props for actually showing something approaching what the game even is. But this is looking a lot like the bad stealth segments of Zelda games that I wish I could skip. <laughs> El Ijo, once again, is the title of the trailer we just saw. For our final guest tonight, please join me in welcoming from Larian Studios CEO Sven Vinke, and from uh, Dungeons and Dragons at Wizards of the Coast, the creative director of Dungeons and Dragons, Mike Merles, to talk about Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah! Now, this was only just recently announced. How did this partnership come about? Uh, we went to see Wizards of the Coast at the end of uh, Divinity Original Sin 1. Yeah. That was back in 2014. And I tried to convince them back then that they should give us the Baldur's Gate 3 license. And they said, yeah. And uh, so, but we had a long chat about yeah. um, what the vision would be for the game. And then. Uh, I mean, at this point, we can pretty much check then, off uh, Half Life 3, in, Never uh, Fucking Ever, and nothing about I Mountain Blade Banner Lord. Stewart, who's the big boss of Mike and the Not that that gets us really, really any closer to, to a bingo. Right and we're going to have dinner in a very shady restaurant. And he had this big stack of paper with him. <laughs> and on it was Baldur's Gate 3. And in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm going to wow. present this to my board. Do you still want to do it? Yeah. Like, here's the thing. Half-Life 3 is going to happen. <laughs> and then a couple of weeks but later, it doesn't we happen until Valve goes out of business. I mean, what does the Baldur's Gate franchise mean? Valve will go out of business, well, me, and they the will have to liquidate the company uh, to sell off their... Right. To, to, I mean, for me to pay off their debts, the and somebody will acquire Half-Life, and they will crap out a bad Half-Life 3 to make a quick buck. So it that is, means so much to us. That, that is the way that Half-Life 3 is, happens. You know, such fantastic storytelling, and it's so exciting to see it come to not only a new generation of gamers, yeah. but for the gamers who remember the 20 years it's been since the right. original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it yeah. really EA's is Half Life 3. Yep, 100%. And we, we got a chance to see the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're going to see in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, we're only talking about what's in the trailer right now. But uh, obviously, you're going to go to the city, because we start with the city. Uh, you start outside of the city, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mind flayers. Uh, they're very nasty. Uh, you are seeing in the trailer the process of seromorphosis, as we, we yeah. call it. Uh, it's accelerated, so that's not normal. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic places. and. As far as we go. I'm curious about some of the gameplay elements because obviously, you know, there's been a big resurgence of dungeons. Because obviously, we just saw that same cutscene again. But um, I mean, how do you translate some of the insane things that players want to do into, you know, what has to be a structured computer game? So we started with the player handbook, which is basically the basic rule set of Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Which player handbook? Which edition? Uh, fifth edition. Fifth edition. Right. Yeah. And so we ported. Uh, <laughs> Are you as kidding much as we me? Could to yeah. The video game. Fifth edition. We looked at what worked yes. really well. We looked at the things that didn't work that well because it is a video game and this yeah. was made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. And uh, so we started modifying those things, and then we had to add things on top of it because yeah. uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game master, and you say, "Well, I want to do this." Yeah. And then the game I master. Want to start a fight with a pigeon? Yes. Like, in okay, fact, I do know what D and D exactly. is. That's yeah. it. So we had to add systems to make that possible within the game. But we've been, we've gone very, very far. Yeah. I mean, can you give an example of like a crazy moment that a player might do that you could actually play out in a game? Uh, well, I could, let's say that we get into a fight because you ask a nasty question, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> and uh, I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, just as an example. It's just an example, <laughs> this is fine, we're just talking, we're just uh, talking. These are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. And I mean, like, Mike, in terms of your role, speaking to Larian Studios, you have tons of data of all the, of course, the things that players do. What's the sort of information that you provide in assistance? 
Well, really what it comes down to is providing the story support. You know, we think of Dungeons and Dragons, the universe of D&D. Uh, it's like a, a toy box for dungeon right. masters and players to go into and build their own stories. So working with Larry and working with Ven, a lot of it was just opening up that toy box and sharing it. And giving that kind of guidance, yeah, oh, Lord, you know, like, I remember I, one of our first I played second edition, that was my introduction to the game, and, and yeah, it was rough. Kind of it was hot and nonsense. Where do we want to go? Where remember Thacko? Fuck Thacko, though. And then for the, in terms of the system support, you know, what, what does it mean in terms of the story for each character, for each, for each character race, each character class, so that if, you know, if, if you have your favorite class and it's in the game, you really feel like you're taking on that role that you love so much from the tabletop, yeah. it's really coming to life in an authentic way in Baldur's Gate 3. And we're going to talk in a moment about, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 release dates and whatnot. But we have a second game that we want to talk about and on a new technology known as pencil and paper. I understand that there is a tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Exactly. So in Baldur's Gate, we think there's one saga. All the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of this city. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. And it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga. Right. And it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. And... It's been about 100 years since the events of Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. So this will give you a chance to check in on the So city, here's the thing. What's going on. It's I tried to play the Baldur's Gates we also feature a games back in the day. Campaign that takes you I bounced off of them real hard. Of hell and I was, and I was deep into players, that shit. Yeah. Like, I was in the you, prime you time and place to get way into that shit. And I just, we'll I put couldn't. Put right in players' hands to make that choice. It was just well, too dense, I, have to ask I don't know. It's a question on a lot of people's minds. What can you talk to us about expected release timeframes? So people have been waiting for it for a long time. Yeah. They're gonna have to wait a little bit more uh, when it's ready. Uh, so uh, we don't, we, this is the game that we want to play, so we want to make sure it's really, yeah. really good. And then when, when that's the case, then we'll release it. Well, I know a lot of people have been waiting a long time. And I think I speak for a lot of people here when I say, Take your time. If the Divinity you. Original Sin games are any indication no. of the quality, I guess quality, they're they're re-releasing like enhanced wait. ports Thanks of the so Baldur's Gate games on, on Switch Thank now. Friend of Mike, talk about Baldur's Might Gate. try and give it a try Goodbye. again. Goodbye. Maybe. Goodbye, I guys. Know. Why are they leaving? Well, it's because the PC gaming show has officially concluded. Let's bring up on the stage the fantastic Frankie Ward. Come here, Frankie. All Yay. right, so we can check off nothing well, about well, Mountain well, Blade, so Half-Life 3, never. Is there anything that we missed? Yeah, we're not today. getting a bingo here today. Guys, thank you so much for coming out to the fifth annual PC Gaming Show. All right, show. guys. We want to give an enormous thanks to all of you who tuned in all live. All right, we guys. Want to, of course, thank all of you who personally showed up this morning, and of course the sponsors who helped make this possible. Epic Game Store, iWin, Frontier, Funcom, Paradox, Let's see if Interactive, we can find... Hubbard, Perfect World Rebellion, Tripwire, and Samsung. As you know, PC gaming is a platform. It's not a publisher or developer, so these sponsors are essential for letting us put on this show every year. Thank you so much. And I gotta ask, Frank, any titles Twitch, you're excited we about? Well, I do love a baby elephant, so definitely. So there's, uh, uh, there's the Ubi thing, thing all queued up. Things. Maybe elephants oh, included, yeah. so man For later. Okay. Oops. You don't need to see that. Uh, in fact, let's just, let just start up some Hitmans, because we've still got that one more. Steam, where'd you go? Try and try and finish out that uh, that escalation level that we were trying to do before. Bloop, bloop. Here we go. Also, let me get back into my Twitch dash and just switch the game back to Hitman's. Guys. Guys, I hope you know how much I love you. <laughs> we just sat through all of that together. Simdar, you joined us at exactly the right time. <laughs> you joined us at exactly the right time. All right. Let's hit some mans. Let's fetch some profiles. Let's do it. Okay, so it was... Sapienza, ba -doo -ba -doo. Okay, that's right. We're we're still on level five here, and we've got deadly landmines. 
Deadly landmines. So, swap that out for medic pills. Starting location, become as gardener. Rashkvar says, think the disarm device is in the mansion. Not sure, though. Okay. Uh, Caruso, we've got... Hold on, I figured this out earlier. Kick it back over to the schedule screen. Uh, we've got a little over an hour until the Ubisoft press conference. Little over an hour until the Ubisoft press conference. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, we got landmines. Oh, jeez. So, wait, are they just gonna... Whoa. Yep, that was a landmine. That was a landmine. Okay. Okay. Let's try that again. Yep, good start. Good start. Rashkavar says starting in the garden may be unwise. Yeah, could be. I did not do that last time. I ran into an entirely different landmine. Oh, God, they are everywhere. Oh, God. Uh, can I go this? Oh, jeez, there's one. Oh, God, they are everywhere. Why? How come they're not setting off the landmines? Why do these jerks get to be immune to landmines? Sorry, we're not in need of a gardener right now. Please turn around and walk away. Oh god, they're jeez. Yes, they are everywhere. Oh god, why? So do I have to do I have to Do I have to destroy all the landmines? Do I have to disarm all of them cuz they are flipped flipping everywhere? Okay. So yeah, I'm supposed to find and equip a device. But it's not really giving me any hints about where device might live. Hold on. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be that guy. Um See, what's this escalation called? Um, extreme Hitman Gladwin S Simulacrum. Uh, disarm device. Yeah, we're just gonna. We're just gonna go ahead and. Alright. It's in the safe in the security office. All right. Well, if that's the case, let's replan this shit. Because if it's the same security office I was in before, then starting as, then starting as a guard puts me right behind, right beside it. Or uh, mansion security, rather. So. Let's let's go back to lockpick because I might need that to get into the safe, and then I can just get the emetic poison from from the kitchen. I was only starting with it for. Okay, so. Hmm? I'm hoping it's. I'm hoping it's this security office. Oh boy, no, that boy sees me. Okay, uh. Just wait for him to turn around. That's right. Turn around every now and then. Just take care of this. Okay. Ah, yep. Safe. Unlock with lockpick. Okay, now we're talking. And oh, there's... 
There's some emetic poison right there, so that makes life easier. Go ahead and destroy all that. Let's go ahead and just hide this boy's body. Okay, you live in here now. Okay. So, let's see. There's, there's a white dot there, but I can get past him. There's a white dot the there, but I All can probably... Yes, okay, I can get past him. Uh, let's see, let me check map. Where am I? Okay, so there's... need to go this way. Oh, no. That is bathroom. That doesn't help me. Here we go. Here, here is stairs. Okay, all right, that guy's... Uh, hold on, if I can just... Boop, 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 there we go, there we go. Cool, all right. Okay, so now I can start disarming things. Oop. Actually, do I need to wow, disarm things? <laughs> okay. So I guess I have to, like... Do I have to do something with it? Do I, ha yeah, do I have to like have it out in my hand? All right, wait for this boy. Wait for it. Yep. Yep, you get sleepy. Grab. Do that. Do that. Do this. Grab that. Grab you. You go here. You come with me. You live in here now. There we go. Well, they have assembly instructions. There we go. Just move through here, move through here. Here, stairs, stairs. Wait for this boy. Turn around, buddy. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, so I... Yep, pardon me. So do I have to... Okay. Can I actually disarm it, though? It's not murdering me, but can I disarm it? Huh. Oh, well, whatevs. Let's just wait for these boys. Can I just vault over here? I can. Nice. Okay. Gotta make sure, yeah, because he's gonna see me. He wasn't here before. Okay, there we go. Now I can drop the poison in there. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Come here, bud. You're coming with me. You're coming with me. 
Nope, it's fine. I just need to put him in the bathroom. I just need to put him in the bathroom. I just need to put him in the bathroom. This is fine. This is fine. Nope, it's okay. He belongs in here. I <laughs> that again. Let's try that again. Now I think I know what I'm doing. Just wait for this boy. I wonder if I can coin him. Just to... Can I get a coin past him? I don't know that that's actually any faster. Because he has to talk on his dumb little earpiece. Oh, okay. That's... I don't know where you're going, but that's fine. Saves me the trouble of knocking your ass out. Just head out this way. There we go. Go. Here we go. Oh, cool. So this guy's already cool. Got to him at a different time in his cycle. All right, cool. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm out here a little earlier than I was before, which is nice. Okay, so he just. He's taking his little sippy poo there. That's fine. Go on, bud. Go on, finish up. Finish up. Yep, that's fine. Just gonna put this in here for the next time you drink out of it. But we'll worry about that a little later. I wanna see. Uh oh. Okay, cool, cool. We good, we good. Oh, this guy's in here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Unlock door. Ah, hell. Hold on. Nope, this is fine. Uh, just Let's just close that. Yes, 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 yes. Woo. Get sleepy. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Now you come with me. Okay, how's the other guy doing? Where is he at? Where is he at? Okay, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, good, 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 good. You... Can live right there. Okay, so he's down there. Good, perfect. So yeah, he should be finishing up his phone call and then coming to have himself a little drink. There we go. Yes. Is there going to be any... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody's recognizing me. Okay, yeah, they're coming back out there. So I'm going to have to be careful. Okay, he's taking his drink. He's taking his drink. That's right. That's right. Enjoy your little drinky poo there. That's fine. Take it from me, my friend. Stay off the yeah, the chat's hard to see, but it's there. See, you can see it better when I do like that. What the? Okay, gotta watch out for those guys. Uh oh. Oh, he saw the body. He saw the body. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope, nope, this is fine. This is all fine. This is allowed. Don't worry about it. Oh boy, okay. 
No problem. No problem. We'll just oop, do one of these. Do one of these. New plan. New plan. Oh boy, oh no. Oh no, I'm not getting there in 17 seconds, am I? Crap, 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 crap. Gotta book it, gotta book it. Where is he, where is he? Oh, where are you? Okay. Hold on, hold on. Oh, almost, almost. So close. So close! I mean, yo, I'm not sure if I could have escaped from that situation anyway, so whatever, but... why he wants to, I don't know why he leaves when that happens, but, I mean, whatever. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna complain. Grab that. Pop this open. Grab that. I can't even get into the box. Well, they have a Head this way. This way, this way, down the stairs. Down the stairs, and around. Wait for him to have his little drink. Yep, you just enjoy that, bud. You just enjoy that. You earn that. You earn that. That's right. It's hot outside. You cool off. You cool off, buddy. That's right. That's right. That'll be for you later. Pardon me, friendo. Now I just gotta get this guy. You know, it might be might be quicker to just go through this way. And this way. How's it going, friendo? That's right. That's right. I think. I don't know if the corpse would be safe in the hallway. It should be safe in the bathroom, though. Okay, so those guys are going that way. I mean, that's the thing. There is a big window, but people walk past it all the time, and they don't seem to see the, uh... Like, like if I'm walking past it right now... Uh, yeah, I, I suppose you can sort of see him. Amy Midnight, you cannot put targets into the closet. Can't put targets into the closet. Just the way the game works. Yeah, maybe, maybe the hallway is a better place for him. So yeah, nobody seems to come through here. There we go. But now that I've got him in here, 
Now I can bring you in here. Yeah, you yeah, you can't hide hide the bodies of targets when they're unconscious. Which seems a little silly to me. Like it seems like you should be able to hide them and the same way it gives you it gives you the prompt to when they're hidden to change into their clothes, it should be able to just give you a prompt to to kill them. But eh, whatever. Okay, hop down here. Keep an eye on these bull. Okay, yep, they're they're heading over here, so no problem, no problem. Just wait here while they go past. And I'm just gonna have to wait for the gardener to go through his cycle again. Those guys are way over there. They're not going to see me, so... Whoop. You go over there. Oh, what the... Oh, come on. Come on. Hot nonsense. Oh! Oh, that's nonsense. That is nonsense. How many times have I killed that guy in exactly that way? And that time, that fucking eagle-eyed motherfucker from across the map saw what I did? Oh, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. You know what it is, I think? Yeah, the coin lands out... I thought I was throwing the coin through the window. The coin lands outside the window, and he's walking all the way around to check on it. That's what it is. That makes sense. Because he's a civilized boy who doesn't just climb out through windows. How's it going, Friggle Fru? Uh, pop out here, down here. Pardon me, friend. you. Walk over here. Throw that in there. This away. You yep. unlock that. Go ahead, don't mind me. Take your phone call. Get you. Okay, you can just sleep in here for a while. Head back out here. for this boy's little phone call. So, now that I think about it, Francesca, 
now that I think about it, <laughs> I know, I know. as soon as this I'm guy gets poisoned, calls. like he, they do spend a while on the toilet. I can just, l and since there's no longer a corpse in the way that I need to be afraid that he might see, I can just let him get poisoned, go knock out the gardener on the next cycle, then go drown him in the toilet, then go snap the other dude's neck in the hallway. That might be a better way to try to do this. I mean, then again, my last plan should have worked just fine. And it didn't. Because of magical Johnny eyeballs. So who the hell knows, but... Okay, let's just... So the thing is, he walks really slowly once he's sick. So I gotta make sure that I don't knock the gardener off too early. Yeah, good thinking. Senor Caruso wouldn't like dead rats piling up on his dear old mom's final resting place. But Yeah, it's looking looking like the timing might work out though, because those guys are all the way over there. He is almost to the bathroom. Oh, but they're coming back. Oh, man. Okay. I gotta get out of their line of sight here. Yeah, it might have been a better idea to just coin him over to the left when I while I had the chance. Oh, he's gotta go all the way over there and then back in his cycle anyway. Hmm. And now I don't know if I don't know if the coin will get him or if it'll get somebody else. Yeah, I should have just coined him right here where I'm standing now. Oh wells. Let's see if Johnny Eagle Eye catches me this time. Still throwing up over there. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, good, good, good. Gotta watch out for this guy on the left here, but that should be fine. Okay, they found the body, but I'm nowhere near it, so that's fine. Just hop in here. And snap. Oh no! Oh no, he finished throwing up though! Oh crud, oh crud. Boom! Headshot! I'm the best around! Holy fucking shit, it's hit, man, now! Oop, not that way, not that way. Nope, 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 nope. Gotta go this way, gotta go this way. There we go, there we go. This is fine, this is fine. Nope, uh, just duck under here. Oh boy, there's boys there. Oh! <laughs> so close! So close! Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna take a quick nature break. I think I got it this time. Yeah. 
I think... Oops. Yeah. I think my problem was that I tried to beeline straight for the exit. I should have gone down the stairs instead. Oops. Hold on. Yellow. Okay, just a spam call. Just a spam call. All right. Okay, coin. Yeah, yeah, if I do the same thing, but get the guy in the bathroom first, then it'll probably be okay. Go, grab that. Well, they have assembly. There we go. I wonder if there's a quicker route to the gardens from there, because if I could get over there and poison him before he before he gets to the water bottle the first time? Boy, that would be nice. That would save me a lot of waiting. Oh, well. Yeah, I need, I need like, a car status command in chat, don't I? Yeah, no worries, no worries, Zodiac, Zodiac Eclipse Blur. Are we there yet? I like that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's right. Head, take your phone call. Whoop. You can get sleepy. Okay. He's having his little phone call. How's it going, Harry? Is that Harry Pato? Harry Pato? How's it going? I'm going to the UK in October. I'm looking forward to it. Francesca. So yeah, also this time, also this time if I coin the guy instead of waiting for him to get down there at the normal time in his cycle, then I should definitely be able to get there in time while he's still, uh, while he's still throwing up. So yeah, I should have it this time. Yeah, I still haven't really made myself, a. Uh, an itinerary for my trip. So I don't know what I'm doing while I'm there yet. Okay, so I got a... Oh, the other guy was there before. 
Weird. Okay, yeah, there he is. So I gotta wait for them to finish their little conversation. Okay, trying to see where are mines. Am I gonna... Okay. Shouldn't trip any mines when I coin this guy. Should be alright. I just want to make sure the other one... Yeah, just wait for him to leave. And then... Just flip that down right there. Just make sure I keep this out here. Yep, wait for him. Okay, he's... Yeah, he's, he's good. That... Snap. Neck. Get this back up. Oh boy. Nope, 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 nope. Wait for them, wait for them, wait for them, wait for them. Oh, can I make it? Can I make it? Can I make it? Can I make it? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. No time for strangling. There we go. Boom. Put gun away. Let's get the fuck out. No! I forgot to bring the thing back out. <laughs> I forgot to bring that thing back. Coin for you. guy's suspicious of me. That's okay. He can't do anything to me. I'm not going for Silent Assassin. This is fine. Oh, look at me. I'm a guard. I'm searching for another guard. Jerk. Want to see if I can get to this boy's thing in time? I can't. He'd see me if I did it now. Yep. I mean, I can get to it ahead of him, but... <coughs> hmm. Pardon me. If I were disguised as a waiter, I could do it. Yeah, I can't be mad about that. That's nobody's fault but my own. Nobody's fault but my own. That. Huh. All right, you get sleepy. Go. I wonder... Yeah. Now, because, yeah, he's already coming up here. Do you finish spray in the backyard? Yeah, you know, except for the area around Old Miss Brook. So brave. Seems, I don't know, disrespectful. Yeah, good thinking. Your Caruso was like dead rats piling up on his dear old mom's final resting place. He was really attached to her. Huh? 
Go get it, boy. Get sleep. Get sleep. Good boy. Good boy. Let's just go. Just, just a little. Okay. Yep. Yep. We good. We good. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Oh. Haha. Uh -huh. No! No! I remembered, though! I had it out! It was in my hand! Ah! It was in my hand! That's right. Dodge the bat, snap the neck. Dodge the bat, snap the neck. Coin goes here. This, get this, get this, get this, get this. Joker up to anyway. You know this clown? Hey, bud, don't mind. Oh, nope, won't let me do it. <laughs> also, he, yo, he definitely, that, that is not a large water bottle. He definitely just chugged the whole damn thing. And yet there is still more for him later. It is the magical ever-filling water bottle. Here. You get sleepy. Back out this way. I suppose I could swap out my pistol for a. Uh... That's right. Can't go that way yet. I, want your room. I suppose I could swap swap out my pistol for a sleepy gun. That wouldn't be a bad thing. go. You just go, yep, yeah, just a little bit farther over there. Uh, I feel like he might still be visible there. Just, yeah, just try and center him with the hedge here. There we go. I like that. For him. You gotta be. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh oh, these boys are coming out again. Uh oh. Can I? Whoop. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 
Oh, 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 oh. Nope, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yep, should have should have just shot him again. Should have just shot him again. If I'd shot him, it would have been fine. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so I use the coins. I use the lockpick. I'm wondering I mean do I actually need the coins is the thing what I want to do is booby trap the toilet can I find something else to use instead of coins so I definitely need the lock pick let's see proxy hold on Um, I, the thing is, I'm pretty sure you can only, I'm pretty sure you can only put a pistol in the pistol slot. I don't think you can put explosives in, in that slot. Okay. So this time I'm going to need to wait for him to turn around on his own. Well, oh, and it takes the exact same amount of time. It's fine. Although I do need to er, subdue him because he's a he's a white dot boy. Take that, grab that, grab that, grab that. Ooh, I didn't get didn't get suspicious that time. Neat. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah, not gonna not gonna be able to to get him poisoned on his first cycle. That's okay. That's all right. Don't mind me, just guarding the pool. I'm just guarding this pool from all the people. I'm guarding this pool. Nobody's invading through this pool. No sharks in the pool. No problem. It's all fine. Don't mind this conspicuous remote in my hand. It's all fine. Ducko right there. Okay, now I just need to find something to throw. <laughs> yes, something to throw besides the mission. over 
here. Next, yeah, that's just oh, screwdriver. That'll work. Grab that. Go. Actually, you know what? While I'm waiting for him to take his little drink... I can just drop this right here. Instead of in the bathroom, I can take out my mind device and then go over here. here. Okay, we've got until the Ubisoft conference. I don't know why that guy all of a sudden saw me. Okay, get him. You can hang out in there. Okay, I've got my mind device out. So that's all good. Okay, he's still on the phone. So that's fine. Pardon me, friendos. I don't know if it's possible to drag the other guy to the duck without blowing it up. I mean, the thing is, the first guy would see the body even if I did. Screwdriver. Okay. I've got my mind disar disarm device out. As soon as he blows up the duck, I snap the neck and then book it for the last guy. Just wait for the splode. Just wait for the earth shattering kaboom. And bonus, those guys are going to go investigate the Splodies. Hey, get ready. We got trouble. Yep, we got trouble. No problem. I'll call DW. Snap. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Pardon me, friends. Can I? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'll just be heading over this way. Oh, boy. Well, about time for me to be hitting the old dusty trail. Oh, that's a brick. Nope, I don't need brick. 
I need to get down. I need to get down. I came to get down. I came to get down. Okay. Unlock this. This is fine. This is fine. This is all fine. All according to cake. It's all fine. Don't worry about it. Don't mind me. I am also Gardener. I am also Gardener. It is I, Captain Gardener. Security breach. Keep your head down. Yep, you guys go check out the security breach while I, Humble Gardener... Oh, there is an exit over here. Oh, neat. Oh, wait. Hold on. Where is that? Oh, I can't tell where that exit is. It's... Okay, yeah, I don't... Oh, okay, that's that's just the car exit. Uh, he went that away, Doc. Oh, man. That was scary. That was scary. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> I am the greatest hitman to ever live. <laughs> Guys, this game is so stupid, and I love it. It makes me happy. I love everything about it. I even love its dumb trolly minds. Those make me happy too. It's good stuff. It's fine. I'm going to shut down the stream for just about 10 minutes, get things switched over, get myself a little something to eat, and then we will be back for the Ubisoft E3 press conference in 12 minutes now. I'll see you soon, guys.